Hello everyone. I want to set up some tetras and some barbs I bought to breed, which means when those fry hatch, particularly like the cherry barbs, I'm going to need some really, really small infusoria type stuff to feed them. So I need to start a culture. Now the easiest way I've found to do that is to start with a old filter. Now I'm going to pull out stuff out of this filter. An old filter has usually got some, some pretty yucky stuff in it. So I'm going to squeeze that out. And this filter's been going quite a while. I'm going to give it a squeeze and I'm going to pour all this filtery water stuff into this jug. Now the jug is, has got that much in it. I'm going to just take some of the regular water I'm getting ready to do a water change on and fill this thing up the rest of the way. And as you can see that filter was pretty dirty and I'm willing to bet that there was an assortment of different bacteria, infusoria, inside that filter. I mean that's the whole reason we set filters up that way, right? We're supposed to be getting some biological action well, what I want is to sort out some of that biological action. Now, to give it some good stuff to grow with, I've got some little dry pieces of turnip. And somebody told me many years ago that was good stuff for feeding infusoria. So, I'm going to take a couple of dried pieces of turnip and plop them in. Now, the top of the container is going to have some water on it, so I'm going to dry it off. Then, because I don't want gnats and bugs and stuff falling in there, I'm going to fold it up a piece of paper towel and rubber band that to the top. Now, I'm going to set that into an area, get some light, but not sunlight, uh, in the other room. And we'll see what this becomes in a week or so what kind of stuff that will grow. Certainly is a rich disgusting looking mixture of water there to start with so we'll see what kind of infusoria we get. This is the one that I showed you how to start. It had really all the grungy stuff out of a filter and this is another one I started at the same time with some more filter material. It's not nearly as grungy. Both of these are just overflowing with paramecium and other little really tiny things crawling around and I'm, I'm going to turn the light out and use a flashlight and see if the camera here will pick some of it up. So here goes. Yep, that's the paramecium. You can see in there swimming around all those little dots. It's hard to see through the, through the glass. Well, there you get an idea of how many there are swimming around. This one is just so dark and so full, it's hard to, to see it. What you may not know about paramecium and most of the little critters you can grow in these jars is they're light sensitive. They are attracted to the light. So what I've done is put a light on this jar. And now I'm showing you the concentration up here by the top of the jar as they all come over to check out the light. Now. As you can see, little uh, eyedropper or turkey baster suck up in this area right here. It's going to give you a very, very highly concentrated food. Perfect stuff for the really small fry that, that just aren't big enough to handle brine shrimp or microworms. Really hard to believe that all of this stuff you see in here, or just about all of it, there's paramecium and different other little tiny things swimming around. 